On the best day, was going to throw steroids in the garbage. Because the God of the Bible is the God of second chance. He's the God of the reversal, and He allows you turns. Back in the day when action films and wrestling was popular, and bodybuilding, Arnold movies, Stallone was big, wrestling, Hulk, Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania. You know, that's, that's, that, that was my environment. I grew up in small town Ontario, Pembroke, Ontario, from the Valley. And it was like a lot of you guys, the dream was playing NHL. Right? You could, might as well put a slow moving uh, tractor sign the back of my jersey. I wasn't going to make it. How many of you guys remember the late 70s, early 80s CBS television series, Incredible Hulk? Do you remember that? There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm talking to my crowd. I used to race home to watch that show, and that's how I got interested in bodybuilding. It was going to be no hockey career, trying to fall out, I was useless. So, and my dad was uh, old school, there, there, was no weight, there was no weights, he, was, he owned 140 acres, so every Saturday I was out in the bush and lifting up logs, that was my weight lifting. But I traded that all day when I did four years at Carleton University. First day I joined the gym, I started reading bodybuilding magazines, I traded eating burger fries and pizza for rice cakes and tuna cans and protein shakes. People thought I was nuts. Everybody else would be sitting at the table, I'd crack open a can of tuna and set my alarm clock in the middle of the night because I had a dream. I was all in. You've got to be all in for Jesus. Well, back in the day, Jesus for me was a, was a religion, was a relationship. You know, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, 13 years old, a Bible camp, four hours north of New York City, one of the Jack Wilson camps, more life. Did anybody does anybody know about those camps in the Adirondacks? There's a, few, there's a camp up there up in the um, And I remember John 3.16, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. But for me, uh, you know, Jesus was a religion, was a relationship. I didn't know about the relationship. Yet. And when I went to college, you know, I completely forgot about God. It was all about bodybuilding. I probably read uh, more bodybuilding magazines than I did study for my class. I went from Scrawny kid, 160 pounds, up to 190 natural. Three years, three years of training natural. After three years, I put up some size, 17 inch arms, 300 pound bench press, and then my world changed. May 27, 1987, is the day that rocked my world. Has anybody here lost a younger brother, sister, or an infant child? Anybody here? America was out there. America was out there. I was working on a survey crew, and that was my summer job. One of those beautiful days we waited all winter for. And uh, we got a call. We were, we were in a survey van. We got a call from control. They asked us where 1020 was. I thought, that's kind of odd. 20 minutes later, my uncle walks up, parks his car 50 yards. You see him walking towards me. I say, well, this should be good. What's he doing here? And I looked at his face. He said, what I want to do is my brother was killed instantly. Here we go. Uh, let's do this. Uh, he was killed instantly, uh, driving his bike to school. And man, it just kind of rocked my world. Man, I, I put all my energy, all my emotion, all my power into the gym. And I, that was the only place I knew. Jesus was a religion. I couldn't come to him. No, that was the deal. I went back to university. I said, I'm on. And I said, I got a level, level of playing field. And I started going to hardcore gym. Started using steroids. The left first, just pills, and the guy said, no, I can't do that. You gotta do shots, and doing steroids. So I again, went from 190, 190 pounds up to 220, and the bench press 400 pounds, close to 4 pounds, squatting 500 pound reps. Pretty good numbers, 19 inch arms. I moved to Toronto, I finished university, I joined Ball's Gym, which was first day one in Toronto. I said, where's the, where's the hardcore gym? I'm on I team up with the guy, his name is Jason. Jason wins Mr. Canada a year later when we, we trained together. We were, like a, we were like a machine, back and forth every day, whether we trained, felt like it or not. You know, under the squat, squat rack, 400 pounds, bench pressing, 300 pounds for reps, curling 155, you name it, we were doing it. And we were, we were all in. I'd set my alarm clock in the middle of the night, we are all in. 89 to 1, Mr. Otero, heavyweight champ, that's a qualifier. One more, one more step to go and I get my pro card, that's it. That was the dream. God had different plans. A year after I was at Ontario champ, I remember coming back to my house and just feeling so much emptiness. You see, I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. And I was a child of God. And God disciplines those He loves. And one of the steroids I tried using put me in the hospital. It was a wake up call. And I knew it was time to quit. You know, the best day was the day I threw steroids in the garbage. Started coming back to Jesus. I got a call from a friend. His name is Dave. My friend Bob over here knows him, Dave Shindle. 
When Dave Shinnah walked into my house one day to rent a room, I thought, this guy looks like he belongs at a Jesus belt. He had a little scruffy beard, holy jacket. When Jesus, we drifted apart from Dave, he calls him back, he says, Dave, Sean, why don't you come back to church? So I come back to church, baby went to church, baby would steal us. Great church, and the group on this side. And God starts breathing life back in me. And then I discovered the power of Christian radio, even our radio guys. WBCX, 110,000 watts, Buffalo, New York. I start tuning in every day. And God starts breathing life to me. I really start to realize this is a relationship. And God starts breathing life back into me, and my friends starts changing my life. Now, fast forward, 2018, I started doing TV and radio stuff a few years ago. I go I drive down to London, 99.9 Faith FM. We do a show. Now, one, during one of the breaks, the, the host, Marion, probably know Marion, uh, in London, and she asked me, she goes, Sean, where do you think you'd be today if you were to, if you were to throw a stir in the garbage? I said, I'd be dead. I'd be dead. Did anybody fall bodybuilding or pro wrestling? Now, look at the guys changed in 92. That's because synthetic GH started to be used. They started upping the, the dosages. If you want to be a pro bodybuilder, you know, you have to take the golden era of steroids and stuff we were taking. They're taking GAs, they're shooting insulin, now they're shooting synthol. You know, trying to be a pro bodybuilder is like Mount, climbing Mount Everest. It's no joke. You know, a lot of guys try, only if you get to the top, a lot of people, a lot of guys start dying. I know three guys who died from steroids. I know one guy who committed suicide. I know another guy who knows 10 guys who died. And there's a growing list of bodybuilders who passed away before the 40th birthday. Where's Piana? Couple stories. NBC, uh, Mr. California, passed away. He was 43 years old, with a coma. He used to advertise all his steroid cycles on Instagram. Instagram. He had 900,000 followers. And this is this is the world of hardcore bodybuilding. The pro wrestler. How many wrestlers have died young? Ultimate Warrior died when he was 54 years old. Does anybody remember him back in the day? He passed away 54 years old, heart attack. In a, Three days after he uh, accepted the, the Hall of Fame nomination. And uh, I don't know where his soul is right now. But, uh, you know, somebody asked me, well, how come so many guys would take a chance and roll the dice using all these powerful drugs? Because the, the side effects are well known. It'll, uh, GH growth hormone will, uh, will, will grow your heart, intestine, spleen, and your muscles also. And guys are coming down with heart attacks and heart disease, kidney, liver, liver damage, you name it. Uh, prostate cancer, if you're, if you're taking GH, it accelerates not only the, um, uh, your muscles, but also accelerates the growth of cancerous tissues. Hmm. Now, Scott and I do some shows down at 1029 down in Arkansas, with one of the Fox stations, and he asked me a question live on air. He goes, Sean, what do you think about pro sports? What's going on? How look at the size of the guys in NFL? Well, I did a little research. Brady Quinn, former quarterback for uh, Cleveland Browns, said on the CBS podcast he thinks 40 to 50 percent of NFL players are on performance sensing drugs. I actually think that number is low. If you look at the numbers, how about the guys in the, in the NBA? How are these guys extending their careers in their late 30s, putting up, up the numbers? Did a little research. George Carl coached 2,000 games for the uh, Denver Nuggets. He he wrote for a book, and he claims that the NBA has a drug use problem and he's not talking about so-called recreational drugs. So we know that in sports, in sports, especially bodybuilding, has a has a problem with drugs, performance enhancing drugs. And uh, so I mean I'm, I'm all about discipline. I'm all in for working out. I still work out twice a week. But uh, you know it's really sad what's happening in sports. I love sports. There's no question. I, I support amateur sports but the gambling that's going on in pro sports is kind of sad. It's not, it's not what it used to be. So that's, those, are, those are some of my thoughts about pro sports. Now, who, who remembers some of the golden era days of wrestling? That's why I wrote the shirt. Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Savage, Ultimate Warrior. Man, I used to love watching that stuff. You know, I know what you guys say. Some guys will say, it's all fake. Oh, it is fake, but it's fun watching big guys throw each other out. Uh, so I always feel like that, I kick of that. <laughs> In fact, Ultra Bar was former NPC <coughs> Mr. Georgia. He won, he won a title like me. He went on to bigger things. Now God asked me, now I'm a bodybuilder, and now I'm trying to build the body of Christ. That's, that's where God asked me right now. And God did some, did some cool things a few years ago, introduced me to, to the whole world of uh, TV and radio. I've got a story to talk about that. But uh, I thought, well, okay, we'll go there now, obviously. You know, I, one thing I know that God answers prayer. When I turned 50 a few years ago, 
I said to my wife, I need to start reading this Bible. You see, I always listen to, you know, WDCX, watch John Hagee and Chuck Swindle and all these guys on TV, but I never really dove and really got into words. So I was like, I, I, I'm going to start reading this word. So I started reading this word and I said, I love you, God. Highway 400, I remember one day at work, going to work, and I said, Jesus, use me before it's too late. You see, I just felt like it was like just a, another heap on the heap of forgotten bodybuilders, you know? And, uh, just a backbench in the church not doing anything. So I said, I said to the guy, use me for a today. So I started reading the word. And then my wife goes to me, we're changing churches. We've got to change churches. I said, oh, come on. I don't want to change churches. We're going to Meeting House Church. Anybody know about Meeting House Church? No problem. Big scandal. They closed down. She, sometimes it's, it's, it's important to listen to your wife. She felt that this shit, she was getting the discerning spirit was trying to leave the church. She goes, we're going to Queensway. Queensway Cathedral, which is a Pentecostal church, I think. I go to the Pentecostal Church. God, what are you doing? So I go to the Pentecostal Church. Within a few months, I get an get intro to a TV evangelist. His name is Corbel Peters. He runs a TV show for Yes TV. He was doing this for 17 years. I give him my testimony. He asks me a few questions. Seven weeks later, I'm on the show. I give him my testimony. You know, one thing that you matter, and I start doing shows with Corbel as a co-host. I start reading my Bible. I, I'm trying to memorize 200 verses. I try to get the Word. Because when, when you get the word, the Bible says, Jesus said the word gets, gets implanted into the fertile soul and produce 30, 60, 100. So if you don't know what to do, one thing I can say right now, if you don't know what to do, the next step in your ministry is just get deeper in the word and God will, God will open the doors. For me, they just started open. They start these invisible doors where there's probably just waiting there for, for years, dormant. I start getting the word because the, the seed that gets implanted into the fertile soil can produce the harvest. And that's what started with me. And then once I got a testimony, I put that on YouTube. I started shopping around. I got different radio shows. London, Hamilton. I got guest spots down in uh, South Carolina. Uh, the, the radio station that Billy Graham founded, KTIS, we do a show there. I did a show with them called Real, Real Recovery. And and the, and, the, and the host asked me some questions about how I recovered from steroid addiction. And I said, you, 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 can't, you can't beat addiction by yourself. You need the Spirit of God. We can only put the death of the sin nature by the Spirit, Roman 8, Roman, Romans 8 says. You know, that's what my test for right now. And because, you know, we, we live in this, you know, we see the best of everything. We live in such a, a strange time right now. We, you know, we live in this, I call it the empty culture. We see the best of everything on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. And that carnal part of us wants, want, desires those things. But yet Jesus said, the water of this world will leave you empty. But the, 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 the water I give you, will, you'll never thirst again. And out of you will well up a spring unto eternal life. This is what I'm trying to preach about now and talk about on shows. Is the real you is not what you see. The real you is not your flesh. The real you, you can train all you want or be successful in business. I call these the false gods. Power and status and appearance, materialism, pleasure. You know, you go chasing after those false gods and try to fulfill your life. But you know, it just needs emptiness. If you don't believe me, let's, let's uh, look at Alice Cooper. Does anybody know Alice Cooper? Anybody follow his, uh, yeah. his musical career? Well, Alice, Alice Cooper is a PK, pastor's kid. Grew up in the church and he lived this uh, dark rock and roll lifestyle. And bats and vipers and dark imagery, theatrics on, on stage. And they probably came to an end of himself. He was addicted to drugs, cocaine. His wife left him, gave him an ultimatum. He starts to come back to God. And now he's got to start doing the work in his life. And he was on Great Glory recently. And he said, you know, he had all the cars, all the money, all the fame. But he couldn't feel like God shaped void in his life. And I found the same way in a smaller way. With body you know, you can try to stuff and put stuff, you're putting stuff, stuff, put stuff in your world. It's not going to fill. It's not going to fill. You know, you, you try to win titles or be successful in sports, business. It's not going to do it. In the end, you're going to be filled empty. But Jesus fills our life up. Jesus said, "Whoever hungers and thirsts righteousness, they be filled." These, these are some of the things that I found out uh, through the years. Now, I don't know how much time we got left. I want to tell a couple more stories. Uh, we did some stuff down at East, uh, uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, ESPN, we did some shows down on one of the ESPN stations down in Arkansas, and I just love talking wrestling, so more recently people are surprised to find out that all these wrestlers have come to Christ. Ted DiBiase, a million dollar man, 
Uh, I spoke at a conference re recently, and Hulk Hogan, people are surprised to find out well, Hulk Hogan how to all of a sudden get religious. You know, we did a show, we did a one hour show on Hulk, we, we couldn't get him in the studio, but we did a bio. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Hulk, uh, Terry Bollea is his real name. He grew up in the church, 14 years old, he accepted Christ. You know, and then he, he was actually a rock star. He was actually in a rock group. And then a wrestling promoter uh, uh, discovered him, invited him to a, a training camp. They actually broke his leg the first time. They told him never come back. You know, Terry Bollea, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Four months later, he came back, and uh, everybody knows the rest of history. You know, Vince McMahon ran the business back then. And, uh, you know, they had, they had the size, the charisma, and everything they were looking for. In all these territories, they used to have, does anybody remember Maple Leaf Wrestling back in the day? They used to have these local promotions, EWA in Minnesota, Maple Leaf Wrestling, Southern, uh, all these different, but Vince and Man pulled it all together and, and created the World Wrestling Federation, and uh, Hulk Hogan was the center of that. But there's a dark side to his life, a lot of people don't realize if you watch some of the some of the bios on him. You know, he was living a dark life. He committed adultery with his first marriage. He was caught in a tape scandal. And uh, he was also caught on an audio file with a racial slur. So he, he fell out of favor with, uh, with the WWE. And what, how surprising, more recently, he gave his life back to Christ. You know, he's talking about that the only thing that makes sense in this world is Jesus Christ. And I just love testimony that God tried to share them. You know, Scott, this guy I've been doing radio shows with, he says, why don't we do some wrestling shows? So I'm thinking, oh, God, how are we going to use this for your glory? And start doing some research. Look at all the wrestlers who come to Christ. Ted DiBiase, Lex Luger. Anybody know Lex Luger? King of Christ, he was in a wheelchair. And he, had, he, he was uh, uh, Miss Elizabeth, who was the first lady of wrestling. Sadly died when they were together. When they found all these drugs, he put them in, in his house. And uh, sadly, he... Uh, she passed away when she was only, only 43 years old. And Lex did some hard time in prison. And that's where he gave his life to Christ. And God is doing this. God is on the move in, 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 in wrestling, in a pro wrestling circle. God is on the move in southern Ontario. God is on the move in western New York. And he did some shows down there in WDCX. That same station that started to breathe life into me when I was younger. I actually did four shows down that station. You know, God God is amazing. He can, God can do it exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask or imagine according to the divine power not our power not our brains but when we let loose so like what uh, steve said earlier you know it's, it's time to let go of what things that are precious to me body odor was precious to me when i had to give it up the best day was to threw steroids in the garbage and just and say god i'm, I'm, I'm making a u-turn because the god of the bible is a god of second chance he's the god of reversal and he allows u-turns and he allowed you to turn in my life. And maybe somebody tonight is feeling like you're ready to make that decision. You know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I gave my life to Christ. That bottle camp, upstate New York. You know, when I was 13 years old, I fell away. I was like a prodigal son. But God comes chasing after my sheep. I was my sheep. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice, and know them when they follow me. So I could... When I threw the steroids in the garbage, my friend invites me back to church. I'm hearing God's voice again. I whisper at first. Now he's, now he's, now he's more clear because I read to get in the Word. And he started doing three things for Jesus. Because I want to finish off with three verses. Three verses that mean a lot. Paul talks about, he compares running a race to the Christian life. First of all, 1 Corinthians 9.25, Paul says, Anyone who goes in the race, goes in the strict training to receive a prize that's perishable. You know, my trophy is I threw half them out. Uh, the one trophy I do, the tarot title, I'll keep that, but it's collecting dust. And you know, after I pass away, my, my son will probably throw in a garbage. But we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that the other day. It's, it doesn't really happen, don't worry. <laughs> but we do it to receive a prize that's, in, that's not perishable. You know, whatever your ministry is, take it to the next level. I'm all in. I'm all in for working out. You know, if you're going to do something, go all in. Right? So if, we're gonna, if you have a ministry, take, go for the next step. Ask God, God, what would you have me do? How do you take this to the next level? Because God is on the move in Southern Ontario. He's on the move in Western New York. And, uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm excited to see what's, what he's going to do in the next few years because we're getting close, man. We're getting close. We're seeing things happen now. Yeah. You know, prophecies are being fulfilled in Israel, in Russia. But, you know, just read your Bible. Open up your Bible in Ezekiel 38, 39, Revelation 13, 6. 
13 and 6, uh, those chapters, man, we're getting close. So God, there's a harvest coming, so we've got to be ready. And you know, I, I encourage people, have a testimony, like I'm, this is my 30 minute testimony. Have a 30 second, a one minute, a five, and a 30. Ready to go, you're in the elevator, you have 30 seconds, you're a coffee shop, you might have one minute. People's attention spans are kind of low. Use social media, you know, maybe get a recording, put it, put something together, you know, we'll, God will, God will take you to the next, the next level. There's no, no question. God's on the move. And those longings, those longings we have to, you know, the, to, to, to be top of our sport or to achieve in business or, or, or be rich and famous, those are longings that will never be satisfied because God has said he turned in your hearts. You know, the bar is so high, it, 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 that, that God-shaped emptiness can only be filled by God. You know, that's something I found in death. That's something I want to share with you. I'm not sure if we have any more time or that. Oh, <laughs> well, let's talk about let's talk about some other radio you know, Let's talk about some other topics, some other stuff we've, we've done. I really like. I, I, like, I like talking about the, you know the training aspect. I'm all about training. You know, there's always people who ask me, you know, how, how am I going to lose some weight? And it's really it's all about diet. You know, 70 percent of of bodybuilding is staying in shape. It's not getting on the treadmill. It's just changing your diet. It's really it's really going back to the the, the, the foods that our ancestors ate. Like, you know, like the lean meats, the vegetables, and, 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 and stay away from the processed foods. You know, the, the processed foods are a slow killer. And I try to talk about that a little bit on radio shows, and I try to encourage people, you know. You said, go back to the old ways, you know. If, if you, when you go shopping, you shop the perimeter. You ever notice all the good food, all the healthy foods are on the perimeter? Try to stay away from those middle aisles. I mean, maybe some of the canned stuff's okay, canned, you know, canned fish. Or, but if you want to lose a little weight, my, my first advice is always just to shop the perimeter and uh, all you need is to lose 500 if you decrease your um, intake by 500 calories a day and you say you're 20 or 30 pounds overweight you're going to lose one pound a week within 10 or 10 weeks you're going to notice you're going to start losing weight it's a bit it's a bit of logarithmic you, you won't lose that weight forever but uh, the first 10 pounds comes off easy really easy i try to encourage people to do that because you get a lot, a lot of a lot of times you know what's the best way to lose weight the second most Common asked question is how am I going to how am I going to get some lean body mass? How am I going to get some you know some uh, more tone? Or, it depends on what age you are. And the, the, the simple thing is, is if you if you're you don't need a gym, you could probably just pick up a couple weights, a small weight set, and just do it a couple times a week, or do something, go biking, or just always keep active. You know, like you know, God, the Bible says that uh, you know our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I think you know we should be wise stewards and everything. God's given to us. We should take care of ourselves to a point, you know. But like I said, I took things too too far. Health and fitness can be turned into a god, it can turn into an idol. It's actually an idol that I had to I had to crush by the spirit. You know, we can only put those things down by the spirit. Because you know, uh, it was Pope Francis once said that uh, idolatry is the exchange of life and love for the slavery to unfulfilled dreams. And that, that's basically, man, he nailed it. He nailed it right there. When I read that quote, I don't really like. It. Quoting posts very often, but <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but uh, you kind of nailed it. Whatever that a few years ago, man, that was it. I exchanged life and love for the for for the the, the exchange of unfulfilled dreams. You know, and that's that's sometimes we can we can just we can as men we can just sell out. And it's all about the dream. You know, and we lose focus of what's really important. So, you know, that's a little bit of my testimony, and uh, you know. It's, you guys are great. This, this church is great. I love it. I love. I love this church. And I love Ontario. And uh, you know, I hope to do more of this. Some of the radio stuff I'm doing now is, seems to be on pause. So uh, I said, God, what would you have me do? And then I met Steve a few uh, months ago and started speaking at churches, maybe spread the word around. So yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's connect afterwards. I want to hear some of the testimonies that I connect afterwards, so maybe on uh, Facebook or email, so I'll be back in the corner and we can uh, connect that way. So, you guys are awesome. God is awesome. God is on the move. Thanks, Steve.